What is going on everyone? Today we have 10 of the ugliest skate shoes ever that I could think of anyhow. So let's get right into it. And first up we have the S Eclipse. It looks like melted wax or a deflated car tire. S has some bangers, but throw a dart and you'll hit some busters too. Don't look directly at the Eclipse or you could go blind. Up next on the list is the Converse Shanty Pro 1. I feel bad about this one. Shanty was such a nice dude. We skated for drawers together. I'd see him around. And it's still interesting to me that Converse was making skate shoes at this time because not many people were paying attention to them. They tried though and threw all the tech at this one. Tried to come through with the new design, which in theory fit with what was going on, but unfortunately the end product was just ugly. A lot of scary design choices here and the brown frown colorway did not help things at all. Up next we have the Nike Chode. Nike's first attempts at skate shoes had great construction, but horrible names and questionable design and the Chode lived up to that billing. It's just a giant heaping sweat loaf. <laughs> My local skate shop at the time, Pacific Drive, carried this first Nike line along with that mid 90s Adidas line. I grabbed the Adidas instead. Next is the Savier Staba. Between the Chode and the Nike SB, there was the Nike Savier relationship. Some real hideous shoes here, but the Staba, the Staba yo. I really don't like this style of construction where the midsole is hidden under the upper. Bad 2000-ish shoe trend and it was brought to a few skate shoes to no one's liking. Maybe you liked it, I didn't. Next is the Airwalk Velocity. I had these in a different colorway. The shoe was on some Mad Max survival vibes. Heavy as hell, stiff as a brick. So much fake leather, so much rubber and plastic. Airwalk was on another level with their paneling and flare. Not to mention the height of these beasts, it's out of control. If you drop these from a plane, they would destroy a city. That's how heavy these things are, no joke. Next one is the Osiris D3. From the first side of this, you know you hate it. Taste, taste means a lot and whoever designed these had none. A cacophonous mess of ideas. I never wore a pair of Osiruses, Osiris eye but I had to look at them, which is bad enough. Next is the Vans cab. Vans got it right with the OG cab and half cab, but when the Stormtrooper looking skate shoe phase came in, Vans was producing shoes like this. Cab is one of the nicest dudes ever, but this shoe and that era of Vans Pro shoes is a no-go. The Bezo Boomerang, the name, the Vibe Light, the Roland, just pick one. Bezo is a name no one remembers, but have a pick of any of these and you'll see they're just a copy of what everyone else was doing, just maybe a bit duller. It's not that they're just horribly atrocious, but the branding and the overall look lands them here today. Next on the list is the Castell Chop Top version 2. Bad colorway, bad materials, ugly suede eye stay tabs, produced in a subpar factory, what could be better? I don't like these. Last on the list is the DC Cypher. When I look at the brown colorway of this shoe, it looks like a what if Timberland made a skate shoe. The sole definitely looks like a boot. I will say on most of DC's ugly shoes, at least the overall design is better than all the knockoffs, but still a really ugly shoe. So that's it, 10 of the ugliest skate shoes ever that I could think of anyway. I know there's more, I have more on my list I didn't get to. Maybe I'll make another list. Thanks for watching. Later.